On September 6, 2017, Bungie would release Destiny 2 on PS4 and Xbox One. Later on October 24th, Destiny 2 would also release on PC, letting PC players experience the world of Destiny for the first time. I would go on to play the game a week after launch, meaning I'm not a true day one player, but I sure feel like one. I would play the game almost religiously with my at the time best friend doing literally everything the game had to offer. Destiny 2 would go on to become one of my favorite games of all time, and that is a tough criteria by the way. But on June 9th, 2020, community manager Deej would publish an article on Bungie.net titled, Building a Viable Future in Destiny 2. An article that would become the catalyst for the most divisive event among players since the launch of Destiny 2. An article so upsetting that players to this date are constantly review bombing the game, making angry posts on every This Week at Bungie article, and even demanding a refund for the entire game in some cases. What caused such an uproar among players, and how can Bungie hope to soothe the player base, if at all? That's a long story. If you were to ask any player in 2017 what's Destiny 2's biggest problem, they would tell you a lack of content. Despite expansions Curse of Osiris releasing on December 5th, 2017, and Warmind releasing on May 8th, 2018, this meant within one year you had the base game and two expansions release, both of which were small I grant you, yet in 2018 if you were to ask the same question you would be met with the same answer. On September 4th, 2018, the Forsaken expansion released, marking a huge wave of content being added along with the seasons, marking semi-regular content drops to soothe droughts. In January 2019, Bungie left Activision. This was huge. Every player, myself included, had felt that Destiny 2 could be amazing if they didn't have greedy Activision holding the devs back. The theory was, Destiny 2 is a good game as it stands, but if the devs had true freedom to do as they wanted with the game, we would see the game flourish into something truly magnificent. Destiny 2 had left Battle.net and migrated to Steam for PC players. Cross save became a thing, and on October 1st, 2019, the expansion Shadowkeep would release, marking the first bit of content post-Exodus. Oh, and the game got a whole new free-to-play version on the same day, meaning players who had never played before now have no excuse to not check the game out. The players started to feel like there was a good amount of content to the game now, and were actually excited to see what the future held for Destiny 2, but that would soon change. Back to June 9th, 2020. Building a viable future in Destiny 2 was an article dedicated to one thing. The introduction of the Destiny Content Vault, or DCV for short. Bungie announced that they would be removing from Destiny 2 about 75% of the content from year 1, including, but not limited to, the Red War, Curse of Osiris, and Warmind campaigns, the planets Io, Titan, Mercury, and Mars, Seven Strikes, 13 PvP maps, 15 exotic quests, 5 raid activities, and a whole bunch of other content. Not to mention all the adventure quests, lost sectors, and even weekly powerful engrams from the planet vendors now gone. But don't worry, the Destiny Content Vault also brings back old content to try and make up for what's been removed. So what's back in return? The original Earth location, the Cosmodrome from Destiny 1, Three Strikes, and the Vault of Glass Raid. That's it. Yeah, that didn't set well with players, as I'm sure you can imagine. Okay, Beyond Light will release alongside the Destiny Content Vault. If Bungie plays their cards right, the DLC has potential to soothe the pain of the Vault. But it didn't soothe the pain. Beyond Light would be considered by players and even quite a few critics, if not all of them, to be a major disappointment. With 2018's Forsaken expansion, IGN gave the DLC a 9 out of 10. The entire review is filled to the brim with compliments and gushing about how much of a step in the right direction Forsaken was with not even a hint of a lack of content in the game. IGN gave Beyond Light a 7 out of 10. The review states, and I'm paraphrasing here, just the same old shit you would expect from Destiny 2, only coming away with less content this time. Still a content drought. The raid was good though. Bungie had a chance to try and redeem themselves with Beyond Light and just blew it. 
sitting at a 4.0 out of 10 user score on Metacritic and a 50% positive rating on Steam. It is safe to say Beyond Light was a failure. This is what the Destinations map looked like in 2019 during Shadowkeep, and this is what it looked like in 2020 after Beyond Light released. I was enraged like everyone else and did something I'd never done before. I went to the Steam Discussions tab for Destiny 2 and wrote out my own full article on my thoughts of the Destiny content vault on Thanksgiving of all days. It was not filled with hate, but rather disappointment for what Bungie had done. At this point, everyone thought there was a chance we could go back. If we cried loud enough, maybe Bungie would change their minds. We know now that this was futile, and as if Bungie couldn't make the player base even angrier, they just had to do the unthinkable. In 2021, Bungie had their 30th anniversary of being a video game developer. This would be a prime time to show gamers their thanks for 30 years of Bungie. 30 years of buying their games and loving the hell out of them. So in order to show their thanks, they held the 30th anniversary event in Destiny 2. Bungie released the 30th anniversary pack on December 7th, 2021, 18 days before Christmas. For $25, players received one dungeon, four guns, one sword, four armor sets, all of them were cosmetic, four emotes, two sparrows, and one ship for the price of almost half a full expansion. If you were to remove all the cosmetic stuff and very few weapons, you were left with one piece of content, a single dungeon for $25 as celebration for Bungie's birthday. Bungie was essentially telling players as thank you for 30 years of patronage, give us more money for fuck all in return. Most companies, I hope, would have given away this pack for free. Bungie feels like you owe them for it. And surprisingly, not as many people as you would think were mad about it. Oh, don't get me wrong, there were a lot of pissed people at the notion, but quite a few happily obliged on coughing up the money. The pack currently sits at a 63% positive rating on Steam, not high by any means, but higher than expected. What's really messed up is you received 5 guns and a sword for free, along with a whole new game mode separate from the pack, meaning players got almost as much for free as those who paid, making the entire pack feel like a total cash grab, which it was. Just what Bungie needed to help soothe ties with players. On February 22, 2022, Bungie released the Witch Queen expansion, a DLC that so far has impressed many players and even been regarded as good, if not better, than Destiny 1's The Taken King. An expansion that every player regards as the pinnacle of the entire series. To go back to IGN as an example of the path Destiny 2 has taken, IGN gave the Witch Queen an 8 out of 10. The same guy who was utterly disappointed by Beyond Light was brimming with love and praise for the Witch Queen. Touting the Witch Queen is, and I quote, the best Destiny's ever been, end quote. But even with all its praise, he had one major complaint. A lack of content for endgame players, especially for those who play PvP. You see, when the Witch Queen released, Bungie added another huge amount of content to the Destiny content vault. They put over half of 2018's Forsaken expansion into the vault. The entire Forsaken campaign, Tangled Shore location, eight exotic quests, two strikes, and a whole bunch of other activities have been removed from the game. But remember how when stuff leaves, stuff gets brought back? Bungie added in return at the time of writing this, May 3rd, 2022 by the way, not a single thing. At least, if something was added, I missed it, and that's completely possible. According to a Bungie.net post titled Destiny Content Vault Update, published October 7, 2021, by the Destiny dev team, they do intend at some point in the future to bring back, quote, a classic raid, two PvP maps from Destiny 2, and one classic map from the original Destiny. Again, if this was added, it flew under the radar because I haven't heard anything about it. But you know what they did do before vaulting the Forsaken content? They made Forsaken completely free to play for about two months so those who never got to play it could play it before it's gone. This was great for free-to-play players, given free-to-play became a wasteland barren of content, go figure. 
but they did not remove the Forsaken pack for purchase, meaning you could have bought the DLC without knowing it was free, soon to be removed. But to paying players, it left one thought resounding in every player's mind. If you wait, all the DLC will be free. Why pay? Just play the waiting game. This was, yet again, another blunder for Bungie. Bungie never really compensated players either, at least not in a way that felt meaningful. In fact, I vaguely remember Bungie's response being, and I'm paraphrasing here, well, you enjoyed it while it lasted, didn't you? Isn't that enough? If you were to have purchased all of the currently vaulted content at launch, you would have paid $135 plus tax. As you can imagine, zero compensation for that high of a price would be insulting to say the least, and that's what Bungie did. The only level of compensation that I could find was when they vaulted Forsaken, they gave everyone who owned the DLC three free Forsaken ciphers. They allowed you to pick three exotic quest guns for free to unlock instantly. The thing is, if you played Forsaken heavily, you most likely already owned the exotics they had for offer, making the ciphers practically worthless to quite a few players. Though, they did turn into ascendant shards in case you did own all the guns, a pretty rare crafting material, but outside of the ciphers, I can't find any other instance of compensation. Can you imagine spending 140 plus on a game for the devs to pull almost all the content you paid for out of the game and be given nothing in return other than being told buy the next expansion for $40? $40 for the expansion that marked the end of what you knew as Destiny 2. Why would they do this? Why didn't they just make Destiny 3 if it was that much of an issue? Many players asked this question and Bungie's response left room for improvement. To go back to Deej's article, Building a Viable Future in Destiny 2, Deej writes four major reasons played the role for the creation of the Destiny Content Vault. Reason number one, a very large game file size. Reason number two, longer time to patch due to the amount of game code. Reason number three, underplayed content should not still be in the game. And reason number four, creating Destiny 3 would divide the player base. Let's break down every reason one by one, starting with reason number one. Yes, the game was large. I think everyone who played the game loved it because it was large. In fact, to say a large game folder size is a turnoff for people is a flat out lie. Call of Duty Warzone, a free to play battle royale back in 2020 was almost 100 gigabytes, and the entire game is just a battle royale. According to Statista, the game has had over 100 million downloads with god knows how many active users. According to Deej's article, the game at the point of his writing was up to 115 gigabytes in size. Any player who wanted to play the game would gladly make the room to play, no questions asked. And at the current date of writing this, Destiny 2's install size is 81.83 gigabytes. Not exactly a small file size, but it is drastically smaller than before. But at the same token, the game feels drastically smaller than before. With reason number two, I can see an argument that overall, quicker patches are better for the player. But if you were to ask any player, would they rather wait, say, a week for some random bug patch or lose half the game content, I think a mass majority of players would opt to wait. But on this reason, the devs are what matters here. The more time they spend bug fixing and tracking down weird glitches is less time spent on new content. And in a game in dire need of more content, this is an actual issue. I get why Bungie saw this and went, okay, this needs to stop. Especially when expansions come out every year, every day of development counts. Reason number three is really upsetting to me personally. In Deej's article, he uses Warmind's campaign player time against what players played during a season with its total install size, touting, and I quote, For example, Warmind's campaign represents only 0.3% of all time played in Season of the Worthy, and yet the Warmind expansion accounts for 5% of our total install size. This dramatic imbalance between player engagement and overall cost to maintain is found in a lot of our legacy content, end quote. For those who do not play Destiny at all, let me clue you in to the content cycle of the game. Every time an expansion comes out, every player plays through the campaign about once and it lasts for up to about 6 hours of content. 
With Warmind's campaign in particular, according to HowLongToBeat.com, it takes two hours to beat. It is a true no-shit Sherlock moment to say that Warmind's campaign was only 0.3% of all time played. The campaign of any Destiny expansion has never been what you buy the DLC to grind and actually play. It's all the content around the theme. Be it strikes, adventures, exotic quests, weekly challenges, raids, you get the point. It's never the campaign players play. So this example was made to skew the reader to go, yeah man, nobody's playing it, might as well remove it. Bungie of all people would know why people buy the DLCs more than anyone, and yet they feign ignorance. They picked a DLC they knew had a mini campaign to make the legacy content look unplayed. To say the content should be removed because of the campaign was highly unplayed during a season is as ridiculous as saying Blizzard should remove Diablo 3's campaign because during a season players primarily only played adventure mode. No shit. Reason number four is fascinating. Deej and Bungie as a whole claims that creating a Destiny 3 and making all of the content from then on released exclusively to the new game would divide the player base just like Destiny 2 did when it launched back in 2017. Do you remember I said this letter was the most divisive thing to happen to Destiny 2 since launch? This is what I was referring to. When Destiny 2 launched back in 2017, Destiny 1 players were furious, making the claims that Destiny 2 should have just been another expansion for Destiny 1, claiming the game was just a cash grab from Bungie. Some were so mad about the transition, they instantly review-bombed the game on the mere thought of a second game. The difference here is, if you told Destiny 1 players that they either lose a large amount of content every expansion drop, or migrate to a new game, I guarantee the player base would have said, make a new game. The reason they were so divisive before about the shift was because they did not know it would have entailed the Destiny content vault becoming a thing to happen every year. Now that would have changed things. The community fallout that happened afterwards is still felt to this day. You can't go onto a tweet from Bungie, look at the This Week at Bungie news post for the week on Steam, or any discussion thread about the game without a ton of people asking, when are we getting our planets back? How about all the money I spent? Fix your game and actually care about the players instead of pushing some political agenda online. That last part I threw in because as I wrote the script, Bungie came out with a tweet and blog post about how they support abortion rights because of the new thing with the Supreme Court. Gamers don't like politics, they just want to play their games. This video is not about politics and I will not be discussing them, I was just showing what I've seen in the community. Let's continue. Ever since the release of Beyond Light, everything Bungie posts and does has been bombarded with angry gamers either wanting the content added back or some form of compensation. And it's understandable. Especially when you realize the arguments for why they did it were pretty half-assed. I mean, come on. Install size and Destiny 3 would divide the player base? What well, Bungie did divided the player base, and they would be fools to think it wouldn't have. So what if I told you the reasons they gave were not the real reason? Well, at least they give hints to the real reason. When leaving Activision, we can only speculate what was said before leaving, but I guarantee the notion of removing old content came up. In an article conducted by Axios released March 18th of 2022 titled How Bungie Keeps Making Destiny 2 Five Years After Release, Axios interviewed Destiny 2's general manager, Justin Truman. In the interview, the topic of the Destiny content vault gets brought up, specifically the question why Bungie did not release Destiny 3 instead, to which Justin replies, quote, We're trying to be a single evolving world. We're trying to make Disneyland, right? And you don't build Disneyland 2. You update it and improve it and make it more modern, end quote. After being confronted that Bungie did indeed make a sequel game, Justin states Destiny's vision was always a singular game. Quote, it was harder for us to maintain the true spirit of this vision until we were able to be creatively independent and direct how we saw the Destiny world could go, end quote. Bungie has stated multiple times that they regretted making a Destiny sequel game, citing the discourse it caused among Destiny 1 and 2 players to be one of the series' worst mistakes. So why did they create the vault? Our answer may be found in the past, this time clear back on June 10th, 2016 in an article titled Why Destiny Rise of Iron Isn't Coming to PS3 and Xbox 360, 
published by VG247, or 247. VG247's own Brenna Hillier, I'm sorry if I butchered that name by the way, has a chat with Bungie's community manager Eric Osborne about why the Destiny 1 major expansion Rise of Iron will not be released on PS3 and Xbox 360. Eric cites two reasons. Reason number one, the overwhelming majority of our player base is now on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, around 90%. And reason number two, in order to add new content at this time, and especially on the scope and scale of Rise of Iron, we would have to take away from those older consoles. You would have to lose something. Eric is stating that not only is the lack of players on older hardware driving their decision, but the most glaring problem is the consoles can't do it with the game fully intact. Content would have to be vaulted in order to get the new stuff. Sound familiar? Eric later states in the article, quote, and we want to do it in a way that doesn't destroy the work that was done in the game that exists on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, end quote. Bungie back in 2016 was faced with the problem that they have to date. They made it clear, however, that removing content is not what they want. Let's just say it's not good for public relations. So what's holding back Destiny 2? Most likely the hardware can handle the game just fine, so that leaves one glaring problem. The most likely answer is the engine. Even back in Destiny 1, the engine was giving Bungie major issues. Let's refer to our last article, one that will give us many answers and paint a picture for this whole situation. On October 20th, 2015, Kotaku's very own famous Jason Schreier would post an article titled The Messy True Story Behind the Making of Destiny. In this article, he shares the information he has gathered from over half a dozen current and ex-Bungie employees information gathered over 13 months. In the later half of the article, Jason states, quote, It's not uncommon for a game scope to reduce during development, but Bungie had a unique problem. People who worked on this project say that one of Bungie's fundamental issues over the past few years has been the game's engine, which the studio built from scratch alongside Destiny. Four sources pointed to Destiny's technology, the tools they used to design levels, render graphics, and create content, as an inhibiting factor in the game's development. Quote, Let's say a designer wants to go in and move a resource node two inches, said one person familiar with the engine. They go into the editor. First, they have to load their map overnight. It takes eight hours to input their map overnight. They get into the office in the morning. If their importer didn't fail, they open the map. It takes about 20 minutes to open. They go in and they move that node two feet, and then they do a 15 to 20 minute compile just to do a half-second change, end quote. This tells us a lot about the aging engine used to date. The engine they use is called the Tiger Engine. It's actually a modified, updated version of the Blam engine used back in 1997 to develop Halo. The Tiger Engine was developed out of a need for an engine with a specific requirement set. So specific that Bungie decided that licensing a already existing engine or reworking a existing engine would not serve Destiny right nor be time beneficial to the development team. So instead, they decided to rework the Blam engine since they already knew it front to back, it would only be logical to be the route to take. In doing so, they had a long troubled path that would result in the modern day Tiger engine. It worked great back in Destiny 1, there's no doubt of that at least on a finished product standpoint. To develop with was what the kids call a total bitch, according to quite a few developers, as apparent by the Kotaku article. Activision had to know about the engine and its limitations, so much so that Activision felt the need to start on Destiny's sequel clear back in about 2015 when the Taken King released. Activision foresaw what was to come. According to Chris Butcher, engineering director at Bungie, he stated during a presentation at Game Developers Conference 2015 about the making of the Tiger Engine that the Tiger Engine was designed to last Bungie 10 years. The engine finished development in about 2012. It's currently 2022, marking 10 years. Also, no, that was not another article, just a transcript from a conference, so I didn't lie. But this was important to bring up. Bungie knows the engine is in dire need. Activision knew it was in dire need. To go back to the Kotaku article, Quote, Before anyone could be redeemed, Bungie had to ship the Taken King, which had been going through its own set of development issues. Pre-production on this expansion, which was codenamed Comet, had started in late 2013. 
two sources say the original plan was to release this major expansion at $60 and include a brand new planet, Europa, as well as a new area on Earth called the European Dead Zone, which itself had been pushed back from vanilla Destiny." End quote. The European Dead Zone would be in the base game of Destiny 2, as the main Earth location, and Europa would become the focus of 2020's Beyond Light expansion. Let's keep reading. Quote, None of that happened. In March of 2014, Bungie rebooted Comet, sources say. The team ultimately decided to focus it around a single major map, the Hive ship that had been cut from vanilla Destiny as well as a new public space on Mars, complete with strikes and a new raid. That entire last Mars chunk was later cut and passed to Activision subsidiary High Moon Studios to develop for Destiny's full-size 2016 sequel, a source said. They're helping Bungie make the game. Over the months, Bungie kept rescoping as they looked more realistically at what they could do, and the final version of the Taken King, the one that shipped last month, wound up focusing solely on the Dreadnought, end quote. This to me reads they knew the limitations of the game, so they cut back on their intentions multiple times throughout the game's life. Pulling content was inevitable if they were to keep the vision of a single game. Remember, Bungie always intended one game, a one-stop shop for the entire Destiny universe. So let me paint you a picture here with all of this information in mind. And this is where I have to say, this is all a theory. Bungie reworks Blam, but they are on a tight time schedule. I forgot to mention that Bungie had signed a 10-year contract with Activision, and they were getting a little impatient. Blam is reworked into the Tiger Engine, and worked into just good enough for Destiny, or so they thought. It was good enough for the first year of Destiny, but the cracks were already starting to show. Destiny would struggle to maintain the entire game all at once. So, Activision sees a business opportunity in a sequel. Activision is known for milking game franchises, most notably the Call of Duty franchise with its infamous yearly releases. Bungie feels otherwise, but compelled under contract, they make and release Destiny 2, an act they see even today as a sin. Bungie wanted one game, but the engine's flaws combined with Activision's greed forced their hand. So they played the waiting game till 2019 when their hands were untied from Activision's grasp. Without Activision, they can freely work on Destiny 2. Bungie is a smaller studio now. After leaving Activision, they no longer had nearly as huge of a dev team to work with. But making do with what they have, they started their journey on reworking the game. The first step the Destiny Content Vault. The engine can't handle the full game. They even stated that during Beyond Light's development, they had to rework the back end just for the expansion. In order to keep content coming out and keep the game functioning, the old content had to go. Better to have the game functioning than have no game at all. Bungie hates the idea of content being gone. It's not good press, trust me. But it's a necessary evil in the meantime, and one day we might have our content back but it's a long journey to get there. Again, this is all speculation here, but it all adds up. Why the game was getting harder to update, why they cared so much about game file size, the reason they brought up underplayed content, and even why they refuse a Destiny 3. I could find the article, but you're probably tired of seeing them by now, so just take my word when I say that Bungie has stated in a Reddit AMA that they have zero intentions on using a different engine as in like Unity or Unreal. But he never stated that they were not working on the current one, just that they would not be using a new one. You get the point. I hope you now have an understanding on the Destiny Content Vault, the history behind it, and why the players are furious even to date. My biggest critique to Bungie is I wish they had been more open about this whole thing. Going back to reread the original Bungie.net post from Deej, it all feels shrouded. Like they are beating around the bush and want to just not come clean. At least, that's how it felt to me. Everyone reads things with different intents. I do love the game, if I didn't I sure as hell would not have made this video, but I felt there needed to be a good memoir of what happened, so new and old players can get on the same page. And don't take my theory as fact here. Take the evidence provided and find some of your own and come to your own conclusions. That's part of the fun with these types of videos. All I ask is to not go bitching like a baby to Bungie in every This Week at Bungie, or Tweet, or Steam News post. It doesn't help. Instead, provide constructive feedback and criticisms. Speak from the heart about your concerns with good faith that something good might come of it. 
Nothing good ever comes from hatred and demands. And to Bungie, thank you for making the game. I know it's not in an ideal place at the moment, but I do hope that one day we can get past this hurdle and let the game shine into the marvel you all created. Thank you for the years of content and good fun. Some of my favorite gaming memories of all time came from playing Destiny 2, and I don't intend to let them end. Hell, I even played the beta all those years ago. Can you believe it's been five years already? Well, almost. All I ask is just please be really clear about your intentions and let the players know that you are just as frustrated as we are. It would really help. And to you, the viewer, this was my first real video I've ever made. So if it's a little rough around the edges, that's why. I had a good time making this and spent a lot of time researching just to make this. I hope you learned something because Lord knows I did. Links are in the description for every article I cited in case you want to read them. Thank you and goodbye.